Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing a tutorial for how I make this little pumpkin keychain. It's very easy to make, but there's this like phenomena where when you're on camera, it like to the viewer like dulls how you are. So to be like on camera, you almost have to like overact for it to be like engaging for the audience. Um, and sometimes, like, you can fake that a little bit, but then sometimes your kids wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and there is just no faking that. So, yeah. We're making this. Here's the video. What we're doing uh, is gathering our stuff right now. You need your orange for the pumpkin. You need some brown for the stem. This is worsted weight yarn. I like to, with worsted weight yarn, use a 3.5 millimeter hook. You need a sewing needle. I might have to size down. I've been working with um, the plush yarn for like market prep. So this is the guy that I have handy. Um, but, you know, he's a little bit thick, you know. Uh, row counter if you're into that kind of thing. Stitch marker if you're into that kind of thing. Scissors if you're into that kind of thing. Maybe you just like to knot through your yarn. Who knows? So you're going to start with your orange color. This is a super easy tutorial. You're basically making a sphere and then like adding the pumpkin grooves. Um, I've sold these at markets and the plush variety. Uh, I think I might have sold the pumpkin keychain too, which if you make this pattern in worsted weight yarn or smaller, it's keychain size. If you make it in plush yarn, it's like a nice like handheld size um, situation. So you do with that what you will for demonstration purposes. This keychain size is like better. Uh, so you're going to start with making your magic ring and then crochet six into the magic ring. If the camera is shaky, that's because I'm like got my arms on like either side of my desk clamp phone holder thingy. I call it my tripod, but it's not a tripod. Am I even on camera? I mean, I guess you guys don't need to see me actually crochet it. <laughs> okay, that is one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Off to a good start. If it looks like I'm crocheting awkwardly, it's because there's literally a pole like right here between my arms. Then you're going to tighten your magic ring. And stitch number 10 and then we're doing 11 and 12. Uh, so that was round one and two magic ring round for round one and then your increase round for round two. Now, round three is one single crochet and one increase into the next two stitches around so single crochet increase single crochet increase all the way around uh yeah i'm gonna throw caution to the wind and just try to count so now nah, maybe i shouldn't if i'm being chatty i should probably stitch more through it but. okay so i am team stitch marker in the last stitch so i had already done a single crochet this round so that's why that's you know there and not there uh yeah so now we're increasing that sounded gross i have my next events this weekend and it's event like a full weekend event at beasley farms which is kind of good 
and the fact that Beasley Farms is only like a half hour away because it's like the full weekend event I could just set up on Saturday and then not take down till the end of Sunday. <laughs> But yeah, I like that this event's going to be close and like only one setup and one takedown, but for like two days worth of sales. Um, I just usually get kind of smaller numbers at Beasley Farms compared to other places. I don't do bad. That's why I keep doing it because like the effort is more minimal comparatively, but I don't know. I just hope it's a good weekend. Like, yeah. Anywho, we just finished our third round. I'm going to count because I'm not confident that I can talk and crochet at the same time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're good. Moving on. Round four is two single crochets and then an increase. So first stitch is a single crochet. Second stitch is a single crochet. Third stitch is um, an increase. And then you'll repeat that all the way around. I'm like too tired today to be like anxious about the event and I noticed yesterday I wasn't anxious about the event and I've been pretty much like anxious and like scattered for like every event that I've like ever gone to ever um so I don't know why the calm maybe I'm just gonna like freak out Thursday and Friday uh hard tell and I'm still like crocheting for it I really didn't get much done between last month's event and this month's event um, not in the way of, like, crochet stuff, at least, you know, not, yeah, I mean, I did get some stuff done, and that I've got, like, some new products on my Etsy, so if you're not, if you've not, like, perused that, there's some plushies that I've added that are not super small because I just don't know that like super small stuff is going to be worth the effort to list. Um, but I did get like some slightly lower priced stuff on there uh, that it'd be good for like anybody who wants to buy like a finished make. Um, but I've also got some felt eyes on there. Uh, they're on pre-order right now. I think I'm only going to leave them up for pre-order this week, um, because I don't, like, I just want to control how many orders I'm getting and have, like, the adequate amount of time to, like, make them because they are also, like, a handmade product and it is pretty slow to make them. You have to, like, cut out each layer of material and then like assemble each eye individually, one by one by one. Yeah, so they're pretty time consuming. And because of that, I've only finished a few packs to like have in my stock uh, and to like make it easier to like build sample stock. I use the same color for everything, uh, but there is a picture of like all the color options in the listing so you can see but I went with your guys's suggestions and found um a blue a green a purple that's more like a fuchsia but it's still pretty um there's also a rainbow glitter and like a metallic glitter or no a metallic rainbow that are like cute. I think those are like my favorites. And there's pink. The pink might be my favorite, actually. Probably more true. But then metallic rainbow and the glitter rainbow are like my second favorite. And then probably blue. And then green. And then purple. Because I don't really like purple that much. Okay, we're gonna definitely count these. 
I am not confident in my ability, and I'm sorry the shadow is so friggin' bad. Maybe I should have shut my curtains. Oh yeah, that's like ten times better. So for the next round, this is round five, you're going to, you guessed it, do three single crochets and then an increase. And this is the last of our increase rounds. So it's not a very big pumpkin when you do it in worsted weight, but it's good size in the plush yarn. And I've sold almost out of the pumpkins, the bigger pumpkins when I bring them. Uh, and then my mom sold some up north. She brought some of my stuff up there for a market she was doing. Uh, I only made like 78 bucks or something like that, but she didn't go with very much. That was literally like a quarter of what she brought of my stuff that she was like able to unload in addition to like making a lot of money in like her own items. Look at me go. <laughs> First try. All right. All right. All right. So the next six, seven, eight. Okay. I should start putting how many rounds and not just like the number of rounds. For the next three rounds, you're going to single crochet all the way around. So you're going to keep the same 30 stitches for round six, round seven, and round eight. Um, yeah. So I'm going to do that off camera. BRB. One second. Anywho, now we're going to, you should have something that looks like this little, like half circle. Um, we're going to do our decrease rounds and our decrease rounds are going to be literally the same as our increase rounds, except a decrease in the place of an increase. So you're going to do three single crochet, then decrease around. And two single crochet, then decrease around, then one single crochet and decrease around, and then just to decrease all the way around. Um, you can stuff as you go from this point on, but the whole like trick about having these pumpkins look uh, pretty good and like they've got the like ridges that a normal pumpkin would have is to like not overstuff it. So normally, like I'll advocating. I'll advocate for stuffing things like super firm. Don't do that on this. You want the like ability for the yarn wraps you do to actually like squish the the pumpkin down. You'll see what I'm saying. But stuff as you go if you want. Don't overstuff though. You want it super light. So this is round, if I didn't say, it's round nine, and specifically this round is three single crochets, and then a decrease. struggle and try to get this yarn tail in here is so unnecessary but that's just what my mind is telling me to do anyway around 10 you're gonna do two single crochet and then a decrease all the way around Yep, 
yeah, he came over to try to get the remote. Because I'm not, like, against TV or anything. And I'm not, like, one of those people, like, well, little Johnny can only have one hour of screen time a day. But, uh, I do try to, like, be mindful about it. And, like, when he gets up every day, if his, like, first ask is for, like, a TV remote, I do feel like that's semi-problematic. Uh, and I don't like that or want that for him. So... A couple of times a week in the mornings, I will, like, just collect up all the remotes and hide them <laughs> to, like, make him do, like, actual playtime first. And then, like, right around lunchtime, like, I'll give in and he can do some, like, afternoon TV time and, like, watch his minions. That's really what he's into now. And a little bit of Paw Patrol still. Um, but, yeah, I just... When it gets to the point, like, that he wants to have the first thing he does every day be, like, watch TV, I just have to, like, pull it back. This round I didn't say this is round 11 you're doing one single crochet and then a decrease one single crochet and then a decrease all the way around I think maybe I should count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay yeah this is round 11 struggling on this round when I haven't used worsted weight in a long time I like forget how to like maneuver with worsted weight because it's like so small and this hole isn't even like that small my stitches on this row are like loose I'm trying to like retighten them back up you count your rounds you should have 11 this is like really also by the way about how much you need it stuffed like it can be loose I might throw just a smidge more in there so but yeah this is going to give you like the nice like deep full ridges on your pumpkin but you can count your rounds so the center ring is round one one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that tells you you just finish round eleven. And then round twelve is going to be to decrease all the way around. We just got new measuring cups because for whatever reason in our house we'll have measuring cups and then they'll just like disappear. Uh, so then we'll have like a half cup measuring cup and then maybe like the whole cup, but then we're like missing our third of a cup measuring cups. So like, I don't know, it feels like once a year we have to get new measuring cups. So Zach just got new plastic measuring cups that are like silicone for the cup part. So they're like collapsible or whatever. I'm not really sure. Um, but when they're collapsed, Jagger's been holding them and saying that they're lollipops. Lollipops? Can I have a lollipop? I show people. I'm like crocheting right through my stuff in. I'm not even trying to fix that right now. So these are our Oh, my way. These are our nifty new measuring cups. This is, oh, nice. Look at that one. The one third cup. You just like push it down. Uh, yeah. 
but like this, he's calling it a lollipop. Okay, so after you have decreased all the way around, you want to leave a long tail. I probably leave like two foot. Is that going to be too much? Probably, but it's better to have too much than too little. You could probably do like about half of that. Okay, so I didn't end up adding any more stuffing as you guys seen. So we'll just see if this is like not enough. Uh, then you're going to close the hole. I do think I am going to size down on that sewing needle I showed you. Use one of these. I like this kind. You see the plastic like little loop. I like this kind for the plush yarn, but this kind uh, for the worsted weight yarn. Um, and then if I'm sewing on parts, they have this kind, but with like a curved tip. I like those for sewing on parts because it kind of helps you get like in there. You know, you know what I'm saying? You just go under the front loop only and then you'll cinch it closed. So you should have six loops to go under. At one point, well, a couple of times I've been asked if you get like real bad, like coning, people call it where your like projects look like this instead of like this, you know, rounded. Um, I've always fixed that by I would run this needle like up through my work, go out the center of the m middle, uh, the magic ring center, and then go under these loops right here and then pull it back down then you could like literally like grab that and push it down um now of course you don't have to do that if you don't like to but that's just like a little hack for how i fix coning uh but if you get to this point now you're ready to do your room so you could do what i just did literally and like kind of go through and come out the middle of your magic ring and now we will do the two to three wraps it's up to you how much you want to do there's no like right way to do this but the whole point here is to just make your like little rooms so just pick a spot go around i like to kind of go like under the middle here just to give it something to like grab onto so like if you had just wrapped the outside theoretically that can like fall off But so if you pull this, that'll make a little divot. And then I like to do three. I'll come back to the middle here, go straight down. Then to kind of like offset this, I'll come over here. Do another one. I'm just gonna go down the middle here too. Like I said, there's no like right way to do this. Um, you're just, the whole point here is just to make your like little ridges. And I don't want this other one to be exactly across from it. So I'm gonna like stagger it a little bit because I feel like that looks the best. And then I'm gonna do one more just like over here cause that's where it's looking like it needs it. Yes. Okay, yeah, so I'm definitely probably gonna stuff this a little more, but it'll be fine because once I add a stem, it'll look like just one of those like shallow pumpkins, you know, that are like short instead of like wide, is what I'm saying. Uh, so to fasten this off, so this is the top of my pumpkin. This is where I'll be making the stem here in a sec. And this is the bottom of my pumpkin. To fasten this off, I literally just kind of like go under like any random part but like close together. Yeah, this is kind of like a dull needle for this. Okay, let me pick another spot that's like a little less tough. Okay, here is good. So just under a little bit because I'm just gonna like knot it and then weave in my ends. 
So I'm going to do this. And I'm going to go right behind it and just weave around a couple of times. That, in my opinion, acts as like a knot. And like I've really never had any of my pieces like come undone. And then I do like the rule of three. Because if you weave it through in three different directions, uh, there's no way, like back and forth and back, there's no way that it can be stretching to like pull that piece out, you know. You know what I'm trying to say. So this is kind of my sad flat pumpkin. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to put a stem and we're going to sell it anyway because... Yeah, that's what Bob Ross would do. Now we're going to take our brown and do our stem, which is super easy. So this is my brown. Uh, this is Craft Smart Yarn. This is my favorite yarn brand. I'm pretty sure I already said that, but just in case. Uh, I get it at Michael's, if I didn't say that. That part I don't remember if I said. I think it's a, like, Michael's exclusive brand, so that's why I want to mention that. Oop. So you're going to like slip stitch on. Yeah. I like to go pretty much right next to the center and then into the center to do that. So once you've impaled your little pumpkin like this, you just grab your little yarn strand and then pull it through. Don't worry about pulling through. Um, stuffing during this part because you can easily pull that out at the end and like make it look a little better. I've just slip stitched. I like to pull all my ends to where it's like tightened back up and then chain three. One, two, three, Okay, and then you are going to do two single crochets down the chain. It's like a little hard to like get it on camera because my pumpkin's moving all over the place. But this is the first single crochet. And then, hold still, guy. This is the second single crochet. Do your chain three, and then starting in your second chain from the hook, do your single crochets down. That was one. That was two. My slip stitch there at the bottom was like really looking huge. Like it was this part of the chain, but it just loosened up. Okay. So see how I did it? If you hold it like this, this is my middle. And I like initially slip stitch to the left. Of the pumpkin just you'll want to slip stitch back in on the opposite side of wherever you started and that's kind of gonna help center your your little stem here so I'm gonna go just opposite of where I initially came in and back up through the middle and then grab some yarn come on little guy I think I got some green or some brown from another spot in there, but that's all right. Yeah, cool job. All right. Um, and then you're just going to put your yarn. Uh, my scissors are caught. I've been caught. Look at that. What the heck? Okay. Cut your yarn. Pull through. This is your little stem situation. And then we're just going to tie and tuck right here. So I'm going to tie it. You can double knot it. I'm not going to just to save time. 
And then I am gonna use my big eye here. You are you lollipop, buddy? Okay, so then right by where you tied it, just go there, because it'll like pull it down. See, that looks pumpkin -y. yeah? And then you can just attach a, your little keychain, your little pumpkin. I guess I could do that on camera. Okay, so these are the keychains. I'm gonna use brown. And I'm gonna use also brown. So, I take a crochet hook, now this is kind of like, there's no right way to do this, but however you can accomplish pulling the chain through your piece. Oops. I keep dropping it. Oh, and I'm off the camera. That's part of my struggle is I'm like, Hugging a pole. Okay, I gotta do this off camera. Ooh, okay, there we go. I was trying to hook it through, which usually works with the plush yarn a little easier, but you're not pulling through such like a tiny space. Um, and I usually use like a slightly bigger crochet hook to just like, like it's yarn, loop it and pull it through but I just kind of used tweezers to go through the hole and then like pull the chain through. So this is just amateur day, bro. You guys know I don't know what I'm doing anyway, whatever. I'm just out here like failing upward. And then we got a pumpkin keychain. Whoop whoop. Listen, it's like not oh, as no, good as it could be. You guys know you got them off crochet days, but it's still cute. I like him. He brings me joy. And then these like plastic keychains, these are like, not to try to sell you guys on something, but I really like these. I feel like I went with metal hooks in the beginning, uh, metal keychain, because I thought like, well, that's higher quality and they'll last longer, which is probably true compared to these like little plastic clips. Like that's probably going to stretch out. But as far as like aesthetics only, like these are way better. Um, though I do still like my other ones. And like the other ones, I just kind of go back and forth now between these and this like plastic kind and like my metal kind because I do believe like quality is important too, but like some things are just cute, you know? I like it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video right here. Um, I'm not going to be on camera, so you could just see my little hand. Uh, if you'd like more crochet content, you could check out this video. Oh, I think it'll be on this side because I'm actually not using my forward facing camera for once. Um, and yeah, maybe I need to jog in place.